Hello everybody and welcome to another lesson. Um, this one is like the last, decimals and fractions. However, it's for multiplication and division. Whereas the previous ones were for addition and subtraction. So let's get started. Multiplication and division. The rules you use to multiply whole numbers can be used to multiply decimals. You don't have to line up the decimal points. You will wait until you are finished multiplying before you place the decimal point in the answer. The number, so basically that means, see how this is, basically this decimal point is three places over, and this one is one place over, that is from the far right. So whatever your answer is here, it will be, you'll add these decimal places and it'll be three spaces to the left okay um, as you can see here zero seven one decimal okay so the number of decimal places is the answer in the answer equals the total number of decimal places in the numbers you are multiplying find the product of 2.6 and 0 0.45 set up the problem as though you were multiplying the whole numbers 26 and 45 what that's what they did here ignore the decimal points while you multiply okay so now count the decimal places in the number you in the numbers you multiplied the number 2.6 has one decimal place and the and 0 0.45 has two decimal places for a total of three, which is what I told you earlier. Here, one, two, three. Starting from the right, count three places to the left and insert the decimal point. Thus, the answer is 1.17. When you divide decimals, you must figure out where the decimal point will go in the answer before you divide. So divide 14.4 by 6. Set up the problem since the, set up the problem since the divisor, which is the number you are dividing by, which is 6 right here, is a whole number. Place the decimal point in the answer directly above the decimal point in the dividend. The number uh, which is the number you are dividing right here. So when this is a whole number, it does not have a decimal, then this number determines where the decimal point is such as let me get a better pointer real quick um, let's see where I have that here we have it screen brush that way you can see where my cursor is okay so let's see where we were at so if this is a whole number then the dividend decides where the decimal point goes and that is pretty much right above the dividend okay so div let's see divide use the rules you learn for dividing whole numbers the answer is 2.4 okay so I'm not going to go through that because we'll go through that later if the divisor is a death is a decimal you must move the decimal points in both the divisor and the dividend before you divide okay so in this case the this is not a whole number and this uh, divisor has two decimal places so in this case the divisor determines where you move the decimal point and that reflects directly on the dividend as well so two places this moves two places as well if there wasn't a zero there, if it was just 4.9, which as you can see here it was, then you would add a zero. You'd add as many zeros as necessary. Okay, set up the problem. There are two decimal places in the divisor. Move the decimal point in both the divisor and dividend two places to the right. Note that you need to add a zero in the dividend in order to move the decimal two places. Place the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point in the dividend. Divide. The correct answer is 14. Note, you may need to finish dividing in order to choose the correct answer. You may be able to eliminate 
all but one of the answer choices after only one or two division steps. Okay, that goes page one. So this is where we practice what we just learned. Page two. Okay. So solve. You may not use a calculator. Too bad. Okay, so here's an example of the multiplication. Let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I'll go through uh, I'll go through a few of them for you. I'll try and pick the most complicated ones. So multiplication, let's try this multiplication here. Not that that's actually complicated, but at least the decimal points aren't lined up. So we have 6.2. I am using a mouse to write with here, so excuse the sloppiness. Um, although I have seen some people's handwriting, and in comparison, this is actually quite neat. But we won't grade on the curve. Okay, so... 4 times 5 is 20. Carry the 2. Bring down the 0. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2, 10. So carry the 1. 4 times 6 is 24. Plus 1 is 25. So we are ignoring the decimals at the moment. Okay, till the very end. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 6 is 6. Then we will add 0, 5, 7, 6 plus 2 is 8. Okay, then, so now, combined, these decimal points are three places over. This is one place over. This is one, two. So that is three. So we know we will put the decimal point here. We could actually technically any zero, any zero at the end on the right hand side of the decimal um, adds absolutely no value to the number. So really, you could have the answer just be that 8.75. Okay, so let me, just to remember, I'm going to put number seven. Okay, that's the one we did already. Let's do one more math problem, uh, multiplication problem. Let's do this fancy one. Uh, yeah, sure. Nine point sixty. 2 times 5, 0, 0, 1. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2, 6 times 5 is 35, 6 times 0 is 0 plus 3, 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 1 is 6, 9 times 5 is 45, 45. Uh, let's see, make sure I do three spaces over. One, two, three. Okay, what did I say? 45. Nine times zero is zero plus the four. Nine times another zero is zero as well. 9 times 1 is 9. So here we have it. 0, 5 plus 1 is 6, 5 plus 3 is 8, 
4 plus 0 is 0, obviously, uh, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 0 is 6, then 9. Again, sorry for the sloppiness. So we have to look up here and see how many places over the decimal point is, okay? So 1, 2, so it's two places there, and here it's 1, 2, 3, so 5 total, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> Let's see. And there is our answer. 9, 6. Remember, anything to the right of decimal point, any 0 to the right is unnecessary because it adds no value. Um, okay. So that is your answer. Um, okay, let's do a division problem now. Let's pick one that's, the whole numbers are easy because we don't, well, let's do one whole number one, I guess. Six. Three, we're doing number four, by the way. Three point twelve. So we leave this here, okay, because this is the whole number. And when it's the whole number there, you just leave this. This will go directly up here. We could actually even put it here now if we want. Six goes into 30. No, the 6 go into 3, it does not, so we add the 1. 6 goes into 31. Um, 6 times 5 is 30, so we will put 5 times. 5 times 6, 30. 1 minus 0, uh, sorry, four, yeah, 5 times 6, 30. 1 minus 0 is 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, so we won't put anything. 6 goes into 1, it does not, so we bring down the 2. 6 goes into 12 2 times. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. Point 0.52, that is your answer, and this was problem 4. We'll do one more division problem. Let's try this problem over here, number 11. 2.8 So since this is not a whole number, it's one place over the decimal point is, so we need to move it here to make this a whole number. Basically, we always have to make the divisor a whole number. So this will, by default, move one over as well. So 28 into 39 goes one time. One times 28 is 28, feeling great. Um, 9 minus 8 is 1. 3 minus 2 is Juan. 28 goes into 11 zero times. So we have to bring down the 7. Okay. Let's see. Uh, 28 goes into 117. Let's see. 25 times 4 we know is 100. Then we have the additional 3 on each, which is 3 times 4 is 12, so 112, 28 goes into um, 117, four, 4 times, 4 times 28 is 112, then 7 minus 2 is 5, these are zeros, 
So does 28 goes into does 28 go into 5? It absolutely does not. So we bring down the 6. Oh, and by the way, we can put the decimal point up here at any time. Brought down 6, 28 goes into 56. Well, 2 times 28 is 56, so we know it's 2 times. 2 times 2.8 or 28. It, whoopsie daisy. 56. And voila. So. That's your answer. One uh fourteen point two. And remember we only moved it one over because here we only in the whole number we only needed to move it one over. Okay. Um Okay, let's see, we're done with that. I'm not gonna go through all of those. So this is pretty much the exact same thing which we just did. Um, obviously it's lined up a little different. You would just need to set these up in columns. Okay, I'll give you an idea how to set it up, although you probably already know. So, let's do 20. 20 is 15. Zero, 3 okay so remember since this is already a whole number there's no decimals to move over then we don't need to move this over either we can just simply already put the decimal point up there okay then just do this problem like we did the other ones and now set up a multiplication one for you most of you probably already know how to set these up but if there's any of you that don't out there that is why I'm doing this. Um, let's do number 15. 2.05 times 2.05 times this. All right. 2 times 5. Well, yeah, then just do it like we did before. And at the end, remember however many numbers there are here you will move these over because there there's uh, you'll add the collective place the collective decimal places together as in this one is two decimal places over same here two decimal places over which is four so at the end say you had one zero 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 you would move it four places one two three four then that would be your decimal point okay okay now let's get down to the story problems which are always fun usually a little bit harder as well fortunately they haven't gotten too terribly difficult yet so let us see phone keeps going off. I have mad friends. Okay. So, choose the one best answer to each question. One container of floor cleaner holds 3.9, 3.79 liters. If Zachary bought four containers, how many liters of cleaner did he buy? So, we know that each container holds 3.79 liters. Okay. Zachary bought four. Four times nine is, yeah, so if Zachary bought four, we pretty much, if we multiply the four by the amount of liters in each one, we'll get the answer. Okay, so four times nine is 30. 6. 4 times 7 is 28. Plus 3. 28, 29, 30, 31. Carry the 3. Put down the 1. 4 times 3 is 12. 13, 14, 15.
there we have it so easy now remember with multiplication add the collective amount of places the decimal point is so this one is one two this one had one over here it'd be three but it doesn't so 15.16 is your answer so your answer is D okay moving on so ribbon costs 0 0.45 cents well 45 cents per foot a sewing project calls for 20.5 feet of ribbon to the nearest cent what will be the cost of the ribbon for the project so let's see it's 45 cents per foot let's go ahead and do that 45 staying alive a sewing project calls for 20.5 feet of ribbon okay I usually like to put the larger number on top it's not necessary with multiplication but I do it anyways let's see 20.5 so 5 times 5 is 20 5 5 times 0 is 0 plus the 2 that we carried is 2 5 times 2 is 10 10 again maybe not I'm just joking 4 times 5 is 20 carry the 2 make sure you try and keep the digits you put down here underneath at least the first one underneath the one you're multiplying by and then each next one to the left of that 4 times 0 is 0 plus the 2 4 times 2 is 8 so bring down 5 well 5 plus 0 is 5 2 plus 0 is 2 0 plus 2 is 2 8 plus 1 is 9 okay now move these three places over because one two three okay there we have it your answer is and we can round off here because it did say to the nearest cent so since this is a five let's delete that five and delete this two um let me put that back again with rounding off it's a lesson we've already done but if it's five and above then the number before it would go up if it was four or below then the number would stay the same so that's a five so we need to change this two into a three nine point twenty three so yep there's your answer b okay all right, almost done here. Okay, number 24 is Armando drove 20, uh, 278.7 miles over a three-day period. On average, how many miles did he drive each day? So we know we need to find three equal parts of, of 278.7. Okay. So we'll divide that by three wonderful days. So three goes into 27. Um, three times nine is 27. So there you go. Three times nine, 27. Seven minus seven, zero. Same with two minus two. Does three go into zero? Absolutely not. Let's bring down this eight from here. Okay, I'll do that just to remind you guys. Three goes into eight two times. Okay, two times three is six. Eight minus six equals two. Does three go into two? It does absolutely not. So we bring down the seven. Let me put these little arrow looking things so we don't think they're numbers, they're ones next to this 27. 3 goes into 27 9 times. 3 times 9 is 27. Okay. So, uh, and by the way, since this is a whole number, we just keep this decimal place right where it is. So, 
You drove 92.9 miles a day, so your number is C. Um, okay, now moving on, we have a box of toasted oats cereal is priced at $4.94. What is the cost per serving? Hint, divide the price by the number of servings. Okay, so we have, let's erase this here. We have four ninety four. Okay, a box of toasted oats cereal is priced at four ninety four. What is the cost per serving? So here's the serving size of it, okay? So serving size is nineteen. They already told us what to do. Divide the price by the number of servings. Okay. So, number of servings is 19. 19 goes into 49. Well, 19 plus 19, just imagine 20 plus 20 is easier, is 40, so it goes in there two times. But the actual amount is 38 so 2 times 19 is 38 and by the way since this is a whole number we'll just bring the decimal point up okay um, 4 minus 3 is well let's do this way first 9 minus 8 is Juan 4 minus 3 is Juan so 19 goes into 11 it does not. Let's bring down the 4. 19 goes into 114. Yes, it does. We know that 20 times 5 is 100. Since this is 19, we'll remove 5 1, so it'd be 95. Uh, plus, um, yeah, it'd be 95. Can it go in there again? Um, yes, it can, because another 19 makes 114, so it is, it goes in there six times. You don't have to do it like that, that's the kind of logic I use, just because even numbers are a little bit easier, or just numbers that, yeah, pretty much even numbers. So six times 19 is 114. Okay. And 4 minus 4 is 0. Same with these. I'm not going to write them all down. So we have here 0.26. So there's your answer. C, 0.26. Okay. The last one, guys. Hooray. Lee bought four boxes of honey mixed cereal. How many ounces of cereal did she buy? So four boxes of honey mixed cereal. Um, how many ounces did she buy? So the honey mixed cereal is 12.5 ounces. Okay. And she bought four of those. So we need to multiply 12.5. If she bought that four times, then four times five is 20. It's weird looking too, let me tell you. Let me fix that. Um, four times two is eight, plus the another two is 10, so carry the one. Four times one is four, plus one is five, okay? And as we collectively, there's only the decimal point is one place over, so we'll go from here, bring it one place. Okay. So 50 is your answer. Let's see, is there 50? Yes, there is. So B is your answer. Anyways, thank you guys so much for bearing with me. Hopefully, this helps you pass the GED or at least. Uh, learn the content that you're trying to learn stay tuned there will be another um, lesson and by the way I do
do all of these lessons in order. So you will see, for example, this one I think is lesson seven, um, part two. So I do like from the beginning of the math all the way through, and the lessons are in order. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, also, if you liked it, please subscribe and hit the like button. Share it with a friend. If you know somebody that's studying for their GED, thank you very much.